Good hello friends, my name is Melanie and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a massive book unhaul that honestly has been needing to happen for quite some time. I have an H&M bag on the floor with all of these books in them and honestly it's come to a point where I don't even know what's in this bag anymore so I'm going to start unhauling a bunch of these books. These are books both from my shelf and my sister's shelf so it's a lot of books that I've like passed down to her that she doesn't have any interest in or books that I definitely won't be reading anytime soon or I have read and I didn't like them and I needed to get them off my shelves. This is actually the second round of unhauls that I have done this summer alone. So with that being said, I'm going to go through all of the physical books that I have here, and then I'm going to go through my tracker to see which books that I've read this year and gotten rid of that I haven't already mentioned. So the first book that I'll be unhauling is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. This is a book that I read when I was like really, really young, and you can clearly tell from the text that this is like a child's book, like super middle grade. My sister never actually ended up reading this for class. I had to, which is why we still own the book and I had really good memories associated with it but like I have no intentions of rereading it. She doesn't have any intentions of reading it. I think it's time to get rid of it. The next one might surprise a few of you and that is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. I obviously got this from Book Outlet which is why it does the 20% off. My sister enjoyed this book. I enjoyed this book. I don't feel the need to keep it. I won't be rereading it and I don't really want any of Rainbow Rowell's books on my shelves. I don't have any other Rainbow Rowell book and honestly I don't feel the need to keep it. So along with the fact that Eleanor and Park has lost its love for me. It is also an extremely problematic book. If you haven't seen the issues with this book, definitely go ahead and check the link down below as to why Eleanor and Park is not the book to read. There are so many books written by Asian authors that are much more representative of not only their appearances, but of the culture and of the love that goes into being Asian and accepting that. Unfortunately, Eleanor and Park has also been commissioned for a movie and I'm going to literally stand here and say that like it shouldn't. So I'm going to leave some links in the description down below so that you guys can support Asian authors and their very Asian stories because those are the voices that need to be heard, not the ones written by a white woman. Thank you. So moving forward. The next one I have is Duff by Cody Kepling Keplinger. Oh, I don't even know. I never read this. My sister read it. I didn't even watch the movie. Don't really want to read it. That's going to be the explanation for a lot of these, but this is just a book that's like, it's just gotta go. And from what I remember about the movie, like I didn't like the storyline in the first place. Like who wants to be the designated ugly fat friend? Like that's not good vibes. So bye bye. The next book is A Hello Universe by Erin Atrada Kelly. I did not realize that this was like a children's book when I bought it from Book Outlet, but I thought this was like a really sweet book. I thought it was super cute. The tagline is some friendships are meant to be. I don't know. It was cute for when I read it, but I think I read this for a readathon. I don't know. I don't have any intentions of keeping a children's book. Like my shelves are already full as it is, and I don't have any deep connection to this. Quite frankly, I hardly remember the storyline. I just remember thinking it was really cute. So hello universe goodbye book. The next two are books that are part of a series that if you watch my channel sometime last year you know I read these and you know I hated them and that is Magonia and Airy by Maria Devana Headley. I thought this was such a weird book like it's like aliens and diseases and something about above the clouds and I don't know this was just so weird and like I don't think it was well written and did I even suffer through the second book? I like honestly don't remember. Something about like her wanting a normal life but she's like not from here but I don't know this was weird. I tried to give it to my sister to read she didn't like it. Um it's dubbed by Neil Gaiman but I don't know. I per dubbed by Neil Gaiman and Libba Bray. What the heck? Yeah I personally was not a fan of these. Yeah don't really have anything else to say. Didn't like it. Up next is the random animal book that has been on my sister's shelves for some apparent reason. It's called Poacher Panic. I have no idea what this is about. It's a children's book that she clearly hasn't touched since like she first bought it and first read it. I think she got this at like a scholastic fair or something, but we don't need it. All right, now we get into some of the more popular, more fun books. A bunch of these are books that I have already read or have no intentions of reading. The first being The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. I read this sometime last month. Um, I thought it was super cute. I thought it was really fun. I don't think a book, a contemporary, needs to be over 500 pages. It's about dog walking. It's 
she falls in love, her dad's like a congressman or something, and she has this internship that goes awry and so now she's stuck back in the city and she needs to find a job and I don't know. It was cute. Don't need to reread it. Uh, I remember the story like for what it's worth and I read it all in like a day or two or something like that. So it's like super easy to get through. It just wasn't very good. Like it wasn't anything so mind blowing that I like need to keep it and I need to reread it. Up next is The Secrets You Keep by Kate White. You guys saw this was in my June TBR and I read this in June. I thought it was okay. You guys already saw my thoughts in my wrap up, but like I really don't have any need to keep this. It's not anything I'm going to be revisiting. And it was like a subpar murder mystery, whatever you want to call this book. Up next is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This again was also on my TBR. I have no intentions of reading this book. And quite frankly, every time I see it on my shelves, it just, I'm like, <sighs> I really think these covers are so ugly. Like these original covers are hideous and I don't like them. If I want to read them ever, I can get it from my library. There's like multiple copies. Nobody's really reading them. But yeah, I just don't, I don't want to read this and I don't want it on my shelves because it's taking up space for books that can be amazing. These next few, if you've been on my channel the last couple months, you know you are no stranger to. <sighs> First being Wicked Saints by Emily A. Duncan. I thought this was a dollar store version of Shadow and Bone, and Shadow and Bone isn't even that good to begin with. And I, as a lover of Shadow and Bone, can objectively say that it is not Lee Bardugo's best writing. So when I say that this is a dollar store version of it, I really didn't enjoy this. I know a lot of people really, really like it, and they really like what is Ruthless King that just came out. Yeah. Sorry, it's a pass from me. It wasn't as dark as it was, like, it, it was, I don't know. It tried to be, like, spooky and gothic and mysterious, and it just wasn't. It felt really flat for me. I have an entire reading vlog where I'm, like, so completely over this book, so I will go ahead and link that in the cards. But I'm getting rid of this because this just not good vibes. And the last two somewhat popular books are books that you guys already know that I'm getting rid of, and that is The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King. These were such a sad unhaul for me because I wanted to love The Wicked King. I really did. I love The Cruel Prince, don't get me wrong, but I find no purpose in holding on to the first book when I didn't like the rest of the series, and I have an entire series review on my channel, so you guys can go check that out, but like, I have two, I don't even know you can see them, I have two, three, two tabs, one purple for quotes, and then one green for like an emotional response, but like, I love The Cruel Prince. I didn't like The Wicked King, and Queen of Nothing wasn't all right. I'm getting rid of both of these. It's kind of disappointing, but like at this point, I don't really care. Like, yes, I love the story and I will continue to admire it. However, I don't feel the need to own the books. And the last few things I'm getting rid of are books that I used for class. I bought this used. It is The Fables by Marie de France. The Lays of Marie de France, Text and Translation, and St. Patrick's Purgatory. These were all for my special topics, concentrated authors, Marie de France class that I took over the January semester. I don't really know what else to do with these. I'll probably donate them to the library because I don't think anybody is going to pick this up from a little library. So with that being said, these are just, I just need to get rid of them because I don't need them on my shelves. My bottom shelf is specifically for books that I read like four class or they're a little bit more classic if you will. So those were sitting on that shelf and if I can get rid of three normal sized books then I can add three more classics to my collection. So so I do have a few more books that I've already gotten physically rid of. These are just the ones that I've stacked up. But earlier this year, I had gotten rid of The Bear and the Nightingale. I thought this was a good book. I enjoyed it a lot. I was kind of confused. I know this is a lot of people's like most enjoyed series, but it doesn't get talked about a lot. Do I kind of regret getting rid of the book? Just a little bit because I do want to reread it so that I can continue the series, but it's not something that I'm like pining after right now. So I'll get around to it another time. It just didn't have to be now. I got rid of the singles game. I listened to this over audiobook through Scribd. I didn't know it was available on Scribd when I had bought it from Book Outlet. So that was one of those unfortunate cases where like I bought the book because I was excited and then I saw that the audiobook was available on Scribd and it was one of those books that like I didn't need to read physically and I didn't need to own. So I did unhaul it and it does feel like a little bit of a waste of money, but if somebody else can enjoy it for free, it's fine by me. I unhauled The Wicked Deep and that one was a little bit of a surprise to me. It had been sitting on my shelves for quite some time and I read it for The Owls in April and I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like anything spectacular. I It was definitely a cover buy and I have a message that I have sent to one of my friends, Abby, where she had bought the book and she sent me a picture of it and the naked dust jacket or the naked cover. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Like I literally want it just for the cover. So I bought it and then I read it and then I was sad because it wasn't 
the best thing in the entire world. So though I enjoyed it, it again wasn't something that I need to keep on my shelves. And considering the fact that I only have one shelf, I kind of need to maximize the space. So that was something that I was not going to keep. The next book is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Palpretto. This was good. Like complete, I, I really did enjoy it. Was it again something that I needed to keep on my shelves? No. I, I have an entire reading vlog where I, I did enjoy this book and I do have to reread it before getting to the sequel. But like I said before, was not something that I was super into enough to keep it on my shelves. And I have a feeling that a couple of more books on my shelves are going to be like that once I do get to them. So there's probably going to be like a part two to this later in the year. Objectively, I can say that it was good, but I wasn't completely invested in order to keep the book. I think that brings us up to speed in terms of all of the books that I have unhauled thus far this year. There were a couple of school books that I gotten rid of. Um, I had put them in a box. I'll actually post the picture right here. I put them in a box in front of my house and this girl who looked like she was from like the ages of like 12 to like 15 pulled up with her parent and took the entire box and it was awesome. Like there were a couple of really great YA titles in there. There were two adult titles in there and I was just really happy to see that someone a little bit younger than me could find books completely for free. Crown of Feathers was in there and that was the Owl Crate exclusive edition of that book with the sprayed edges and everything. And so I saw her like pulling away and looking at the book and just thinking like she, you could tell that she thought it was just so pretty. So that kind of made me really happy to like physically see somebody take the books that I had put out for their own enjoyment. So that's why when I unhaul books like exclusive Owl Crate editions with like the deckled edges and it literally has the author's note and the signed title like if somebody else can enjoy a book way more than I did then it's not money wasted you know and so that's kind of how I like to think about these book unhauls because like I have the means to purchase these books and if I can put them in little free libraries or take them to the library and donate them then that's all that really matters like I said in my June wrap-up did purchase 14 books in the month of June I bought a couple more and I have a few pre-orders coming in so later towards the end of July you will We'll see a book haul which probably will even out the amount of books that I'm getting rid of today but honestly that's okay we're gonna do the book stack and see I'm gonna count just how many books I will be unhauling today and it does make me really happy to see that I am unhauling as many books because book unhauls to me are like super satisfying 16 16 <laughs> books that I'll be unhauling. So I think that that evens me out in terms of the books that I have read, in terms of the books that I have bought. And like I said, just by looking at my shelves, I can see there are a few series that I'm like on the fence about keeping. So I'm really excited to get to those series so that I can actually decide like whether or not I'm going to keep them so that I can free up more space on my shelves. Kind of chaotic, but you know what? That's fine. So that is it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this book on haul, let me know in the comments down below. Are there any books that you think I should completely keep or am I good to get rid of all of these? Do you think all of my reasons are justified? I have a feeling that The Cruel Prince is gonna be the one that hurts the most people, but yeah, I'm getting rid of 16 books and I am proud of myself. <laughs> There's so many more books that I can get rid of. I just need to read them first. That is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on all of my socials. And until then, I'll catch you on Instagram. out to these books.